Hey friend, welcome back to Performing Cloud Assessments. Now I thought possibly the best place for us to start is just to have some fun here. Let's start asking questions and we'll get critical. <laughs> we'll start looking at what we're doing and how well we're doing those things and then look at where we could potentially be, both from a business and a technical perspective. Keeping in mind that as much as it might be a harsh thing to realize out there, uh, organizations don't hire technology people out there just because they want someone to run their servers for them. They're there to help enable the organization through the use of technical tools to solve a business objective. <laughs> now I'll tell you, for all our technical friends out there, this is one of the most important things you can get in your head early on in the IT game. We are not here to perpetuate ourselves, we are here to solve problems for the organization. And this is a harsh truth that a lot of organizations are suffering right now when they get into a process known as gap analysis. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> That's right, so gap analysis, imagine there you are in a movie and there's this giant cliff on both sides, there's a bridge, it's broken in the middle and you're trying to figure out how to get across. Ultimately, gap analysis is where an organization takes a look at its business and technical sides. Okay, so you're looking at the tools, the resources, the people who are operating those systems, the processes that are around those tools and the way that they work together or against one another. So at the basic start, gap analysis is all about identifying where your organization is right now and what the value proposition is behind the tools that you're using. Keeping in mind that we're bringing other factors in, things like the return on the investment for the cost that we've already spent on a solution, how much value we're getting directly back out of it, Keeping in mind that value could be a monetary win, or it could be something more strategic, like being able to compete in a market with another competitor, or being more flexible, or being able to innovate faster. Those are all things that can provide value to an organization, and we wanna bring all those factors to the table. So once we identify where we are, the gap analysis continues on by saying, where is it that we want to go? Where are we trying to get to, brother? So think about what sort of factors might contribute to the direction an organization might want to move in. It could be that you have a new customer that you're trying to group. This is a demographic that we want to sell in. We've never sold in Europe or Southeast Asia before. So part of our objective is to start selling goods in those markets. Or it could be something more about being able to keep up with a competitor. That's right, I know we got our different competitors out there, whether it be friendly or a little malicious. <laughs> the point is that keeping up with the Joneses and making sure that we're holding bar with our other competitors just to stay on the table, that might be part of the gap analysis. What is the difference between what we're doing now and what our competitors are doing. If they're implementing XYZ and we don't have that functionality yet, or we don't have that location or offering or interface, et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> that's where the gap analysis comes in. One very powerful tool for uh, uh, going through the gap analysis is something known as SWOT analysis. And that stands for, uh, an abbreviation, it stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And as I mentioned earlier on, keep in mind friends that you can apply an S. Uh, SWOT analysis like this to both business teams, processes, divisional, organizational structures, all of the human and skill-based resources, as well as your technical resources. So how um, up to speed is your actual technology infrastructure, the network, the storage, the compute, the application portfolio as well. So just kind of looking through the four different categories, we're trying to identify first, what are the things that we do really well? Okay, do we have a good ROI on this? Maybe that's part of what we're getting out of it. It's a, it's a good investment. We're seeing a good return on it. It's easy to operate. It could be that it's well aligned with our customers. Okay, and the point is again, to try to think about the parts that you want to probably see continue on. Strengths are gonna be things that we don't want to lose as a part of this process. And in the SWOT analysis, part of our gap analysis, <laughs> we're recognizing the things that we're doing well so that we can continue doing those well or maybe continue augmenting and improving them down the road. Weaknesses would be things that we are underperforming, okay? Now, a lot of this has to do with having enough metrics in place to identify that there are particular problems. And we will talk a little bit more about reporting and benchmarks later on. Just kind of recognize that in the weaknesses phase, it's not a bad thing to call out your weaknesses. The more um, forthcoming you can be about what sort of problems your organization is experiencing, uh, the better you can help solve those problems. And one big factor that's gonna help along the way here as well is to engage business and technical stakeholders Okay, and indeed, a big part of starting with the SWOT analysis is typically starting first by identifying who the stakeholders are in a particular organization so that they have their voices heard at the table. If you don't have the right people involved in this discovery process, odds are you're not gonna be bringing all the factors that you need and you're gonna miss components, whether they be technical or business. 
Very important too, friends, some of you may be increasingly less technical than some of the other folks watching these videos. If you have a business-oriented mindset, you have a lot to offer the technical teams. Similarly, the technical teams have a lot to offer the business teams in understanding how one particular strength or weakness might manifest or affect other strengths and weaknesses elsewhere in the organization. So think about those comprehensive mechanisms that are happening there. After that, when we get to opportunities, these might be flat out problems, okay? So these are things that we know that maybe it's not about the performance level, but they could just be uh, problems that we have. It could be lack of functionality, okay? Or it could be other fundamental problems like the ability to not support a particular language, or perhaps there's something that has to do with a licensing problem with a particular vendor that's happening out there. The point is these are glaring problems. As you move through this chart, strengths we wanna keep, weaknesses we want to identify, opportunities we actually want to fix. And then when we look at threats, we recognize these are things that if we don't take any action, they will deteriorate the value if we don't take action. So that's what I'm gonna write on here, deteriorate. <laughs> Whoa, I don't know if I can write that one on here. Deteriorate the value <laughs> if we don't take action. So that's kind of the key theme here. And ultimately, once you identify the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of a particular service or solution, we can then prioritize which factors we've discovered are going to be the most important requirement that we need to discover moving forward. And indeed, in the next couple of videos, we'll be talking a little bit about technical and business related requirements, and also some of that stakeholder discovery process as well. One of the last things that I wanted to kind of leave you with here today is recognizing that if we can jump over here, boom, there we go. <laughs> so when we're talking about uh, identifying the SWOT analysis, this is also a good time to kind of recognize that as you're doing gap analysis, particularly in the world of cloud computing, you want to consider the cloud vision that your organization has already adopted. And <laughs> if you're sitting there saying, wait a minute, we don't have a cloud vision bar, what do we do? Well, that would be the very first process here is to start by establishing what the vision is for your organization. What do they think they're going to accomplish by using particular cloud services out there? The earlier an organization can take this on, the better it can help them when they're processing things like gap analysis. So once you have a vision, the next part of it would be to consider what sort of um, execution plan you might have as a part of it. And that could be referred to as your operating model. Okay. Identifying the vision is more of about a strategic element. Where do we want to go as a result of using cloud services? The operating model is more specific to how we would implement those particular tools to accomplish something for our organizations. The next step down would be to actually execute on the model. Okay, so you're kind of moving through these different layers. You're thinking strategy, okay, up here at this top level. The next level operating model, you're thinking more about the tactical implementation behind it, how we might go about doing it. And then in the execution level, you're thinking about actually being able to uh, operationalize those tools and make them useful for the organization. So moving down in granularity level, down to actually having your management and your teams uh, implement those pieces. The final part would be to go back through and then evaluate. Okay, once you've gone through this process, we want to always revisit the vision, the operating model, and the execution of those plans to see if they are still valid. This all ties directly back together when we were looking at our gap analysis, thinking about where we are and where we want to go, and recognizing what sort of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats present themselves along the way. And so, just to kind of recap, in this lesson we were talking about the process of gap analysis, identifying where we are and where we want to go. Keeping in mind that the more we can discover and the more stakeholders that we can engage in the gap analysis process, the more likely it is that we'll have good, useful information to help us shape our decisions when it comes time to begin plan and eventually implementing those solutions. One of the last things you heard me mention here is that if your organization hasn't already begun the process of establishing a cloud vision, some sort of cloud strategy, then this is the right time to begin doing that. The sooner you have those deciding characteristics, the better it will help you with your gap analysis. And definitely later on when we start looking at the actual feasibility of implementing any particular solution. So always keep that in mind, having a vision to establish strategy, which is what do we hopefully want to accomplish by using cloud services? and then implementing some sort of tactical model around the operating model of cloud. Okay, so vision leads to operating model. 
Finally, the operating model can be executed, and this is where we operationalize it and actually have our teams go and uh, implement the particular services and solutions. And then finally, going back to that evaluate process to ensure that everything that we've been doing continues to be something that drives value for the organization. And so in the next lesson, we're going to be talking about a very important facet, and that is identifying stakeholders and gathering requirements as we move through the gap analysis process itself. Very exciting. Stick with me and I'll see you there.